Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, the theme around here is um, pray with me. Don't pray with me.
you are here tonight, you know you lost. Lord, have mercy. Come on, preach up. You know you lost. Lord, have mercy. You know without a shadow of doubt that you do not have the power to live a Christian life. Lord, have mercy. Help, God. Help, help. You know you lost. Coming to church your whole life, but you lost. Help us, Jesus. Claiming grace and salvation, but you lost. Right. You know you can't live right. Well. You know you're living in sin. Come on. Because you lost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But the campus gave me the task to talk about no salvation apart from grace. No salvation apart from grace. This is the aspect of grace that preachers are scared of. See? All right. See? <laughs> I'm not scared of it. All right. Church members are scared of this aspect of grace. I'm talking about a grace that will change you. Not just grace is being preached and taught today, a hyper grace. Right, yeah, right, right. Where you can live like hell and still go to heaven. I'm talking about the grace of God that yeah. brings you salvation. Yeah. 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 Don't tell me yes. that Jesus died out on Catherine's cross. Nailed in his hand, in his feet, yeah. and not be able to change me. Right. If you believe that, you have bought the lie of the devil. Oh, have right. mercy. Right. Because God prophesied about this grace and this salvation. Right, right. In Ezekiel 36, he told Ezekiel to prophesy. And he said, you tell Israel, I'm going to sprinkle clean water on them. Right. And they shall be clean yeah. from all of their filthiness. Right. I'm going to give them a new heart. Yeah. I'm going to give them a new spirit. Yeah. And I'm going to put my spirit in yeah. And they're going to cause me to walk yeah. in my ways yeah. and in my judgment. Don't tell me God can't say it.
it is. You're in the book of Titus. Yeah. Paul told Titus, I left you in Crete. Yeah. To set things in order. Yeah. I'm setting things in order tonight. Jesus has all power. Yeah. He can resurrect you and cause you to live right. like he desired for you to live. Yeah. Brother Chris said, Grace. It's divine influence on your heart. You're going to tell me you got divine influence on your heart and you can't do nothing. The same God that, the same God that set the stars in the sky, the same God that departed the Red Sea, He's in your heart and you can't live nothing. I don't believe it. I said, now I'm out of the pit of hell.
Purity, righteousness, godly, in the present word. Not in the great bad battle, not in the way over the other. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Tonight. Tomorrow. Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, I'm pressing forward to the mark, to the past of the high calling of God. Yeah. All Paul was saying is, I want to live right now like it's going to be in heaven. All right. All right. I want to live right now. I'm pressing That's right. like I live, going to live in heaven. Yeah. I don't want no excuses. I don't, I don't want to hear my wife made me do it. I don't want to hear the devil made me do it. I want to hear that Christ is living in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. It's not I that live, but Christ is living in me. That's right. That's right. That's who's living in me. That's who's living through me. I want to leave this place. Amen. You know you're not saved. Amen. You know, you know good and well you're not saved. Wow. You know you're not living nothing. You know you're thinking bad. You know you're talking bad. You know you're walking bad. Mm. So why play around with it? Surrender yourself tonight to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll give you that new heart. He'll give you that new spirit. He'll cause you to walk. And it won't be so, since when you get Jesus, it ain't going to be so much you trying to be a Christian. It's going to be something else in you.
honest with the Lord tonight. We thank God for my for our ears have heard and my hearts have filled. Let's thank the Lord for what Brother Robinson was saying. Let's thank God for what we need. Yes. That's what we need. You know, that's the kind of grace that Christ gives. That's the kind of grace that he gives. I don't want to hold you long, but uh, I've been asked tonight to talk about abounding grace. Where sin did abound much more than grace of life. Father, we should ask you to help us tonight uh, to give you a word. This particular text is taken from Romans chapter 5, and verse number 20. And it reads, For the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Right. Work with it. with Oftentimes, well, actually, when we look here in the book of Romans, you're going to find that the uh, Apostle Paul has already given us a sufficient foundation, if you will. He's taken Old Testament scripture and he's given us a one-on-one -on -one course, if you will, in biblical anthropology. When I say anthropology, that is the study of man. Right. Now, who knows man better than God himself? Right. God knows what condition man is in. So what he has done, uh, the Apostle Paul has taken Old Testament scripture and has laid the foundation that both Jew and Gentile, which are non-Jews, stand guilty before a holy God. Right, right. He's also given us, if you will, the means whereby it gives us, the, actually in Romans chapter 4, it speaks about the picture of Abraham and tells us how he was justified. Right. And it was not by works, it was by grace. Right. And, and God has always saved this way. Right. He has never saved another way. Yes, he has always saved by yes, grace. Right. In, in chapter 5, the apostle is making a, if you will, a contrast between the first Adam right. and the last Adam. Yes, and he's coming down to verse number 20 where he shows the abounding grace that is in Christ. Now notice he says, moreover the law entered. When he speaks of the law, we could easily call that the Torah. Right, right. On the Greek, call that the nomos. The Torah would be easier to say. And we look at the Torah, we look at the first five books of Moses, because there God had given Israel his law there. Yeah. The do's and the don'ts, thou shalt not, all of those things. God put his law there, and most, uh, the ones that we know, the one that we know is, it, it usually is the Decalogue, the, the Ten Commandments. But we know there were actually, there were actually over 600 laws that were given to Israel. That's right. But notice he says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Right. We understand that through one man's disobedience, Adam, all became sinners. Yes. Adam was the federal head of the human race, if you will. Right. He represented every one of us. When he sinned, we all sin. Right. Oftentimes, many people try to trivialize their sin. Right. Some will say, well, I'm not like so-and-so. I haven't killed anyone. I haven't robbed anyone. I haven't done this or done that. Yeah. But my friend, because Adam sinned, you and I not only inherited his guilt, right. but also the nature of our parents were also, was also passed down yes, to us. Yeah. Yeah. We were conceived in sin yes. and in iniquity. Yes. We were offenders from the womb. Yes. Now he said that the law entered, the word entered really speaks of that it came in privately or it supervened or it, it came in aside. It came that the law, that the offense might abound. Now, when we speak of the word offense, it, it, it comes from a word paratoma, a paratoma, a paratoma, which means to deviate. It means to blunder. It means to a misstep. 
And we have to understand that when Adam sinned, he died immediately, spiritually. Yes, right, yes, right, right. We also find that gradually his body began to what? Die. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And so now, now, now notice, it says, now the law into the defense might abound. See, Paul asked this question about the law in Romans chapter 7. He says in Romans 7 and 7, what shall we say then is the law of sin? God forbid, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I have not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Right. The law put a name and an identification upon a transgression. Can you imagine living in a world where there was not where there's not a law? Can you imagine driving on our public highways without written laws? Without any boundaries? Don't you understand? Can you imagine being at a four-way stop and there's not four stop signs there, you would have a four-way collision, wouldn't you? It would be complete chaos. But when stop signs were placed on our public highways, people knew exactly what they were doing. As long as there was not a speed limit, you could drive 100 miles per hour. But as soon as they put up a speed limit, 70 miles per hour, you can do below that, but if you do above that, you're breaking the law. Yes, now, he said, so the, 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 the law into the, the, the fence might abound. You have to understand that you and I were placed in a state of transgression. Paul describes it like this. In Ephesians chapter 2, we were dead in trespasses, in sin. Meaning that we were not only deviant, we were not only offenders of God, but we could do nothing about it. Unlike what you hear on Oprah, what you hear on all of these other shows, speaking about self-help and how good you are, what you need to do to improve yourself. What a dead man is missing, essentially, is life. When we look at this particular scripture and we see the impossibility of our offense, first of all, let me just say this real quick in passing. All sin is against God. Now, now notice this. If, if, if you've ever watched an archer where they're shooting an arrow, wouldn't it be something that if they could take the arrow and point it in any direction that they wanted to point it, but yet it always made the bullseye? Let me tell you about God. No matter how insignificant you think your sin is. No matter how you rationalize it. God is the target that you can't miss. God is the target. Your sin is always first against him. So we, so, so we see here that sin has come to increase. That's the word abound. It means it has come in abundance. And it is increasing, and it seems right here in the first part of this verse, man has no help, man has no hope. He has no anecdote. Thank God for the conjunction. Amen. It said, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I, I like this verse right here because is saying where sin had increased, where it had proliferated, where it had grown, it was going to take, it was going to take something greater than our sin to put us back into right standing with God. And where we see the abounding grace, most of all, we look at God's grace, is God's unmerited favor, meaning that you can't earn it, you can't buy it, and you don't deserve it. You, you'll find that this grace that did much more bound, it is greater simply because of its origin. It is God's grace. God is eternal. God is infinite. God is transcendent. God is holy. And you'll find that his grace 
If, 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 if God is all of these things, yeah. then so is his grace. Yeah, that's right. It says grace did much more abound. It abounded by reason of the means whereby this grace was sent. We needed greater grace in order for us to have greater grace. We needed a greater high priest. We needed a greater sacrifice. Right, teach, teach. Yes, sir. We needed a greater mediator. Yeah. Our mediator could not be just like us. Right. He had to be like us, but he had to be greater. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Let me just, I'm going to finish it. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm going to bring it to a close. Jesus Christ never entered into holy places made by men's hands. That's right. 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 He said, but he entered into heaven itself yes, to stand in the very presence of God for us. Right. We talk about the greatness of Christ. Christ is a greater high priest. Those high priests, they enter in once a year, right? right. But you have to understand the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. But it says that Christ Jesus entered into the holy place once, obtaining eternal redemption for us. The Bible lets us know that if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean to the sanctifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works that you should serve the living God. The high priest did his work in the Holy of Holies in the cloak of darkness. But we find in Romans chapter 3 that Christ Jesus does his high priestly work out in the open. God has set him forth. He didn't do his work. He didn't do his work in the physical Holy of Holies, but Christ brings his blood, brings his altar, brings his high priesthood out here to the front. God shows you that he's holy simply by what he has done to his son. He did not spare his only son. He delivered him up for us all. We think about this abounding grace. Yes. I see it abounding in the life of God's offenders. All right. All right. I see God's grace abounding in the life of his offenders. Yeah. God did not just forgive your sin and then bring us let me put it this way. If you're bankrupt and you're in the negative and someone comes and puts a deposit in there and brings you back to zero, you still broke.
says, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, covetous. He goes down a whole list, but I like what he says, and such were some of you. I know many people want to preach that that's just what they are, but Paul puts it in the past. He says, such were some of you. But what has happened? Grace, he said, but you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. First Timothy chapter 1. He said, I thank the Lord Jesus who has counted me worthy. Putting me. He didn't go to, he didn't go to seminary and, and, and then call himself a preacher. He says, He put me in the ministry. Now, let me tell you this an education is great, but you need a calling first. You need a relationship first. Yeah. 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 I'm going to just say this for a second. Most of our churches, uh, the, 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 the pastors that are auditioning for the church, they have to have so many letters behind their name, but yet still, you got a whole New Testament written by tax collectors, written by fishermen, yeah. 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 common men. Right. That God used for his glory. You said he you said he's got a doctor. The first thing I want to know is he saved. You got a PhD. Is, is he born again? I'm afraid that not even the apostles would qualify for some of these churches. They wouldn't even make the cut. Yeah. But Paul said he put me in the ministry. Now notice this, he goes back and gives us somewhat of a he reminisces over his past. He, 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 he wants you to know what God put in the ministry. What God entrusted this ministry to do. God changed him, right? He said who was before a blasphemer. He was injurious. He said but he did it ignorantly in unbelief. He says, and the grace of God was abundant with faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. This is a saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I know that you stayed at home and, and watched Mr. Rogers all day and I, I know you never left the house and, but my friend it, it, when you put yourself beside an infinite holy God you are the chief of sin you are the chief of sin alright good we're going to close this grace also we say we have Christ standing. He's made us to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. By grace you are saved. Yeah. I want to tell you something. In the age, that in the ages to come, he might show his, his kindness. Yes. He said, uh, 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 of his riches, which is through Jesus Christ. This is the same grace of which the Apostle Paul tells Timothy and encouraging him. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, that it was God who saves you, called you with a holy calling, not according to his own, uh, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Right. Yeah. He said, what she purposed in Christ before the world began. began. Oh, yeah. Thank God for grace. Yeah. Thank you. God has given us a greater high priest. Yeah. He has shed greater blood. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's a greater sacrifice. Yeah. He's given us a greater standing, right? Yeah. And let me say this. I think about the song that we often sing in our hymn books. Grace that is greater than our sin. It says, dark is a stain that we cannot hide. Yeah. What shall avail to wash it away? Oh, Look, there flow of the temple. 
crimson time. Yes. Whiter than snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Yes. Grace that is greater than all of our sin. Yes. Another song comes to mind. I, I, I think about it, oftentimes I sing it when I'm at work. But it says that we were helplessly guilty when God's holy law was against us. But Jesus fulfilled what was written yes. when we were defenseless. He went to a cross yes. for the sake of our sins yes. that we could be righteous and reign with him. Yes. But for the dawning of time, we were chosen by God to be holy. And to the praise of his grace, he has, he is preparing us now for his glory. Yes. When I think of his mercy, our hearts are amazed. For Jesus has turned our rebellion into praise. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God is crucified. Hallelujah. Our debt has been satisfied. Hallelujah. The demands of hell have been denied. This grace is greater. God bless you. Before I even knew who I was, or what my mom and daddy meant to me.
promise you I won't be but a man. But I want to say what the mother and daughter said. Thank you, God. You've been so good. So good. So good to me. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Amen. Thank you. Uh, all you pastors and preachers that are here tonight. So bless you. I want to thank you. My wife and thank my daughter and my church family. Amen. This is life for me. This, this, this is what I live for. Man, to get this. All this good preaching. Man. Peach Valley. Just give me a few minutes. And everybody else is here. It's good to see. I see members from Pastor Peach Church. And it's good to have. It's good to see everybody. Amen. I just want to cover everybody and move on very quick. Peach Valley. Paul say yes. Yes. Preaching must make sense. What good is preaching if it doesn't make sense? And if preaching is to make sense, it must be about Jesus Christ and Him alone. My word is Christ, uh, or not Christ, but yeah, it, better yet, we'll deal with it. But uh, grace manifested. Amen. Grace manifested. Amen. And I want to come from Titus. Amen? Amen. When Titus says, Brother Charles dealt with it a little bit earlier, for the grace of God has appeared, uh, has appeared that offers salvation to all men. All right. Amen? All right. Teaching us to what? Deny. To deny. Amen? Amen. Ungodliness and, and all those ungodly things. Amen? Amen. Worldly lust, all that mess that God changes us from. Amen. Grace manifested very quickly. Before something is manifest, before it's manifest, it's what? It's a mystery. Make sense? Before it's manifested, you don't know what it is. It, it has to be manifested in order for it to no longer be mystifying yeah, right. to us. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Not in a detective way. To, for grace to be manifested, it is something that was always there, but it was hidden. Right. Amen? Amen. Yes. It, 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 it is used biblically. It is like this. You have you ever lost your car keys? You are all over the house. And then you get to a point of frustration. You're mad. Well, I know I just had them. You are all over the house, and and, and we, we better not do what 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 uh, 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 Brother Robinson said, and and, and, and and use ungodly language. Amen. We shouldn't do that, but you can get to the point of frustration. You look around for 30 minutes, and, and all the time, the key was looking at you. The keys were looking at you, amen? You were just overlooking the key, amen? Anybody gonna pray with me? A mystery is something that you don't understand. But if given enough facts, you can understand it. The Greek word is musterion, which means something that was once hidden and now is made manifest. There was something that was once sealed that has now been made open. And that's what Titus is talking about. The grace of God has appeared to all men. And when I say the word all, it doesn't mean all men as in, in the whole world, but it means all type of people, black men, white men, Chinese. The grace of God can say any ethnicity, should I say. But when grace is manifested, it changes the life 
of the recipient. Don't tell me that you received the grace of God and you're still the same you were before you say you received the grace of God. When grace is manifested, change. Oh, Barack Obama ran on his first ticket in, in 08. He said, change. Amen. But when grace, when the grace of God is manifested in your life, it brings about holiness in the believer's life. Grace does that. When grace is manifested, I'm talking about the living God, Jesus Christ, the incarnated God found in Jesus Christ. When he shows up, things must change. Is anybody going to pray with me? When the grace of God is manifested to the people of God, you'll show up at church meetings like this on a Friday night. Amen? Where you could be somewhere else, but because God's grace has been manifested, you'd rather be here than out there, in here, worshiping the God that has paid your sin debt. Is anybody going to pray with me? Ah, oh, you ought to love God this evening because the righteous die for the unrighteous. Grace is manifest in salvation. If you're saved and God does a perfect work, you ought to know it. I know that I'm different. I know that I've been changed. And that the old song said, I know I've been changed. And if God has come to live on the inside of you, there ought to be some change that has taken place. Is anybody going to pray with me? That's God manifesting himself on the inside of you. It's manifest by salvation. God's grace is manifest by love. Don't you tell me you know God who is love. And when some mess comes in your life, when trouble and turmoil comes in your life, you can't love. Is that right? Is that right? That's God. 
God come in human flesh, being 100% God and 100% man. He came to manifest to us how to live. Is that right? This little chocolate girl behind me, she's mine. She looks just like me. Is that right? I can't deny her if I wanted to. Is that right? And if I'm being conformed to the image of God,
What a treat, what a treat. Started off with Pastor Kennedy, Ella, Dominic Holland, and Chris Brown came. Whew, Brother Alexander, Brother Charlie. Pick it. I'm, this just has been a. I, I know I've been trying to get the red lobster. It, 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 it's all you can eat right now. <laughs> but we've had all you can all eat. You we've had all you can eat tonight. And I just want to thank God for all you who came out. You did yourself a favor. Amen. You, you're not doing God. You did yourself a okay. favor. Because, oh my God, didn't we hear from him tonight? He hid every last one of us behind the cross. And we heard his voice calling us to live that which we proclaim. If we receive grace, we ought to live like it. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. He's manifested his grace and his love and his mercy and his kindness toward us. And that yet while we were sinners, he died for us. Amen? Amen. So as Sister Brittany Harper and Sister Elijah Capers come to minister to our heart in song, then right after that, we will close out. If God has laid anything on your heart, if you just want to come to Jesus right now, there's no other help, there's no other place that you come, can come than the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. So as they sing and we get ready to close out, stick with us just a few more minutes. Amen? Amen. <coughs>
just because of who he is. He's God. He demands that. He's the first commandment Moses brought there. Thou shalt have what? No other God. God knows that he's God. He knows that there is no other God. You know, we make stuff out of God, but God said he's worthy of all praise and all honor all the time. I just like to thank again everybody for coming out tonight. Amen. For all those that are behind the scenes that don't get to step in the limelight, they make it possible. Amen. I was a great organist. It was the maestro that stood out. The big crowds came, but there's a man behind the wall pumping the air that went in the hole. After the show, the man said, it was pumping the, the, the air into the organ, said, we did a good job tonight. And the man said, what do you mean we did? He said, we, we, we did a good, he said, no, I'm the maestro. I, I, he said, okay. <laughs> Next concert, the man pumping the air, the organ wasn't there. You can't do stuff by yourself. No. I know that I get to stand out front, but it's, 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 it's people who make me who I am. From my church family to my wife to my immediate family. Just, you know, it, it's people behind me. Amen. And I just want to let you know that I do and I understand and I realize that. Amen. Amen. That makes things possible. And more so than even family, God makes it all possible. He's the one that's making things be as they are. I want to thank you for spending your evening with us. But I also want to ask you, amen, to come back tomorrow. Amen. Come back tomorrow morning. Amen. We got... Pastor Jared, Derek Jackson, amen? First Baptist, he's going to be preaching at 9. Come back, come back and, and get you some more all you can eat. We're going to have Robert L. Spicker, amen? Pastor Pete, I, I can't pronounce his name. He'll, he'll be preaching tomorrow, amen? And then after Pastor Pete gets through, we're going to have some lunch, amen? we got some, some spaghetti and sauce and some alfredo sauce and some lasagna and come on back amen and give your saturday to god amen come on come on come on come on come on he's worthy amen if we were just up here playing around but we got some good preaching amen and after the uh, pasta lunch we'll come in and I have a table and a mic set up, and we'll have some people here. We'll have a Q&A session, amen? For any questions that you've ever had about the Bible that you might want to ask, amen? We got some men that, that can go deep enough into knowledge to be able to answer your questions, amen? So we'll have that, and after that, we'll start back up again, and we'll have Brother Charles Hunt, amen? Then shortly after that, we will close out. Amen. So we probably will finish early afternoon. But come back. Come back and support. Amen. Come back. Come back. Come back tomorrow morning. Amen. If all hearts and minds are satisfied, let us think. Again, I'd like to thank everybody again for coming out. Amen. I heard some people get up and say, oh. Amen. <laughs> Stretch those bones, amen. But again, we'd like to thank all the singers, amen. Thank brothers, the Torchfield, Peach Valley, SBG, and Sister Ann, and Sister Elia, and Brittany. And if I leave your name out, don't get mad at me. I didn't drink my V8 today, amen. But again, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Pastor Pete. Thank you for all you. It's, it's just a good time. Amen. To me, this is what it's all about. How are we saying we want to we wanna, uh, 
live like Christians, then we want to uh, go out and do something else. Amen. That, and what I'm saying, all that to say is there's no better place to be than in the house of God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Good blessing to you, brother. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you. Thank you, Alton Piggy. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you, Brother Charles. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. You guys done. You bless my heart. You bless my heart. It makes me want to live something. It invigorates me to stand and see other men pronounce the word of God. If our hearts and minds are satisfied. Amen. These services. Thanks to Mr. Holland. These services up on, on YouTube. Uh, so if you and he also makes copies of DVDs of these services. So if you are looking for uh, to go back Amen. And enjoy Amen. this, or you want someone to hear what we've heard and experienced tonight, uh, you know, direct them to, uh, I guess, New Christian Life, Lebanon, Tennessee, and you can put it up on YouTube. Uh, and once in a while, you put in one of these preachers' names, or deacon's name, and it will come up. Now be careful, because a lot of other stuff comes up sometimes. Unless <laughs> 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 you don't learn how to get that out the way yet. But, uh, so, and there are other services that we've been here that are on there also. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. if you're interested. So, uh, just look it up, New Christian Life, uh, Lebanon, Tennessee, and you can put in the preacher's name, or put in the preacher's name, and you can scroll and find it. But, uh, it is on the YouTube. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Boy, we've had a good night. Somebody say amen. amen. What do you want to do? If you're over 55, what do you want to do? Go home and watch Matlock. <laughs> if you're under 50, what do you want to do? Watch CSI. <laughs> you got to hear from the living God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank God. Yeah. If our hearts and minds are satisfied, let us look to the Lord. Yes. Eternal God, our Father, we like to thank you for this church meeting, the opening of this Bible conference. Oh God, I hope something that was done or said that would draw the people back tomorrow. If they, if they, if they only came for a little while to, to hear from you, it, it's not us, it's you. It's not me, it's you. It, it, it's not about the preacher, but we're talking about you. We're not trying to shine. We, we're trying to tell a dying world about a God who's able by his grace, by grace that we're saved. And even that, oh God, is not of ourselves. It's through faith and it's a gift. And it, it, it's not of us. It's not of us, oh God, but it's a gift. Lest any man should boast. We, we thank you, Father. We ask you to give everybody traveling grace to make it out to their appointed places. And oh God, we ask that you lay it on their heart that they come back and sit a spell with us tomorrow and learn more about grace. Sit a spell and fellowship with one another around the fellowship of the spiritual food and that physical food also. Yes, Lord. Father, just touch everyone that's going through stuff in their life. Yes. Yes. Ah, a lot of us have come out, but our hearts are burdened. Yes. Yes. We got grief. And yes. Some people in our family are sick. Just touch God as only you can. We thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Who's manifested his grace to this very moment. To this very breath, God, you've been so kind to us. Cause us to love you for it. And we'll be ever careful and mindful 
to him that's able to present us in the presence of a holy God without spot, without blemish, and without stain. To the only wise God, our Savior, and his Son, Jesus Christ, and the church that loves one another says together,